Well, good afternoon, Magindan Hapon, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Now, do you hear that noise coming from my Samsung French door refrigerator system here? Well, if you have a problem like that and you're trying to identify where is that sound coming from, what is causing that problem, and how can I fix that problem, well, I think today's episode might be of interest to you. So sit back, relax, hopefully get some good information today, and let's get today started. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. To talk about this model that we have back here behind me oh the noise is driving me crazy and this particular model of the samsung french door refrigerator is the rf 28 hded bsr uh, now this model here was manufactured in may of 2014 and we also have a refrigerator just like this in the Philippines at our home at Villa Feliz. And it is a 2017 model, but it is the 220 volt version of this refrigerator here. And it's also a different color. This is stainless steel. The one we have there is like a black type of a color, or a stainless steel black or something like that. Well, anyway, what I am trying to get to is that if you have any of these Samsung French door systems that have a back panel with a cooling plate similar to the way these are right here. Uh, you will see that this will probably apply to your refrigerator as well. Now you can hear over my shoulder that noise, that annoying noise, and you can hear it even louder because uh, it will echo through the back of the refrigerator. Now a common problem among the Samsung French door refrigerator systems, and I believe it's systemic, and I think Samsung knows this, uh, and they just have gotten so many of them out there that they don't really want to spend a, uh, a lot of money on a recall. Uh, so what they do is they send people out to your house to fix it, and of course you're gonna end up paying for that. But if you don't wanna do that and you wanna try to fix it yourself, I think today you'll see that it's not quite as difficult or a challenge as you might think. So a good way to kind of narrow down where that noise is coming from is to do one simple thing. When you hear the sound, just open up either one of your doors, you're on the front of the refrigerator, and see if the noise stops. And the noise stopped. Now, I'm going to show you what I believe is the root of all the problems we're having here with this noise. Well, once you open the door and that noise goes away and you look inside your refrigerator and one of the things I already did, I cleared off most of the stuff on the shelf, all of the articles of food inside here. So it's a little bit more presentable. Also, we're going to have to do this anyway to be able to get to where the problem is. Where the problem is, let's talk about that. You see this little sign back here that says Twin Cooling Plus. Well, there's a big plate that goes across this area back here. Uh, it is a sort of like a cover. And behind this cover back here, uh, we have some fans and, and we have a coil back there. And as the moisture builds up on the coil and it freezes, it impedes with the ability of the fan to spin because it actually rolls up against the fan itself. So what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to remove these shells and we're gonna have to remove this back panel back here. And once we do that, we can see the evidence uh, that shows that we have a icing problem back there. And then what we'll do is we will remove the ice. Now, before we get started on the actual problem behind the panel in the back, we have to have access to it. So what we're going to do, we're gonna remove all these panels. Now, I've left the electricity on right now so that I have light. But once we get to the point where we need to gain access to the electronics behind that little panel, and it's really not that much, but we need to have the electricity turned off. So what we'll do is we'll look for a flashlight or some kind of lighting so we can see the details back once we get behind uh, the cooling plate back there. Now the tool that we're gonna need today is a Phillips head screwdriver. And we're gonna use this to remove the screws that hold the bracket that holds the back panel to the back of the refrigerator. So let's go ahead and get these shelves out of the way. 
Now, might I make a recommendation here is that you take a picture of where your shelves were or do some kind of mark where they were if you want everything to go back in the same place. Now, lucky for us today, we have a video. We can go back to the video to see exactly what the spacing is inside here. Now to get this bottom shelf off, it's a little bit tricky, but not too difficult. There are a couple of clips inside here on both sides. And if you compress them, if you compress them, it will allow you to pop this up just a little and slide this panel out. So that you do not affect your water filter mechanism right here. Now to gain access to the back side of this panel, we have to take off four screws. We have one behind this little clip here, and then we have three on the bottom down here. Now we're ready to try pulling out this panel. Uh, this panel is kind of tight inside here, so you're gonna have to wedge up a little bit behind uh, this portion or underneath to pop this thing out. Now you have to be careful when you pull this out because remember there's going to be wires connected to it that connect the fan to the uh, back of the refrigerator electronics. So make sure you, that you don't damage the wires or the connectors. So once you open this up, and those are those wires that I was telling you about right there. We're going to disconnect those here in just a moment. But you can see there's where the problem is. You see the fan up there? There's the fan. There is the ice and the ice is rubbing right up against this fan. Uh, and this is the coil I was telling you about. So let's go ahead and disconnect these connectors inside here. And uh, we're going to turn the refrigerator off. And what we're going to do is we are going to defrost all this area right here. Um, so these are just a little uh, push pin. You just squeeze these together and these electrical connectors will come apart as part of this assembly. Now that we have the back panel safely disconnected from the electrical connections up there. I went ahead and plugged it back in just for the light because we're not going to go inside that component right there right now. And it's much brighter than my flashlight I found out. So what we're going to do, we are going to turn the electricity off again anyway because what we have to do, we have to remove all the icing off this whole thing. Now let's talk real quick about engineering. And this is why I think it was an engineering failure of Samsung not to do this properly. What they should have done, they actually have some defrosting elements inside here uh, to do things like do the defrosting around the coil, but they should have continued to run it up around this section, the input to the coil itself, and they did not do that. So chances are this is going to be a problem for year and years and years to come. So at least we can fix this problem on our own without having to rely on an expensive repairman to come in and do the repair uh, for us. Now the next step is to obviously remove all the ice that we have. Now the proper way to do this would be to turn the refrigerator off and allow several hours for this to do a total defrost. And what will happen, it will defrost and drain down this little tray back here which goes into an evaporator tray underneath the bottom of the refrigerator. Now if you notice this is clogged up as the water starts going down and what you might want to do is pour some hot water inside here and also make sure that this runs clear. Uh, I have not had that problem with this refrigerator so far. Uh, so what I am going to do, and it's probably not recommended, but what I am going to do is use a hot air gun and very gently uh, use it to remove all of the ice buildup. And that will ex uh, expedite the, the process of this from
from hours to basically minutes. Now, I caution you if you're planning on doing this because you have electrical components here as well. Now, make sure you don't get too close to these electrical components. Make sure you don't get too close to the coil because this is actually soldered. They use solder to make these connections on here as well. So it's a slow process. You pull it back. You do a little bit at a time, not allowing it to get too hot. That's what I'm going to do today. But again, the recommended way to do this is to just allow it to naturally uh, defrost and then go back and we'll put everything back together again. Now, this is what it looks like after about 30 minutes of gentle uh, blowing of the hot air gun on the, on the coil itself and the copper tubing that goes and feeds the coil. Uh, now, I caution you again, if you are going to use like a uh, hair dryer or a hot air gun or something like that, be very, very careful that you don't melt anything, any of the insulation uh, that prevents water from getting in some of the electronic components, uh, the, the housing, uh, the wires, and all also, be careful when you are around any of the, the copper tubing because the copper tubing has solder inside here. You want to make sure you don't cause it to separate. Uh, so what I did was I got all of the, uh, the frozen condensation off of the coil and off of the copper piping and around all this area here that was causing a problem against us. Now, I got to tell you, uh, Samsung really could have done a better design with this. Uh, in a former life, many of you know that I was a systems and integration engineer. Now, they did one good job to prevent any of the moisture from building up right here and they have it you see this heating element they have a heating element that goes around the coil that's this right here and that prevents this from freezing up and that's what happened and all those old refrigerators from the 60s and the 50s uh, that, that's the reason why they didn't have auto defrosting and this is an auto defrosting mechanism now what Samsung should have done they should have extended a coil system similar to this up around the copper tubing up here as well. Plus I also think they have a quality control problem because you see this copper tubing right here that's carrying the refrigerant that was all froze. Remember this was all froze over to here where this little cutout is where the fan goes. Now this is at an angle here so the water that froze here continued to go over here and started banging up against the fan. Now quality control should have looked at this and said this copper piping should be centered. That's why they made this indention back here for this copper piping right here. Had that been done we probably wouldn't be talking about this today or we might have been talking about it, but it might have taken quite a, a longer time for this to happen. So those of you who have not had any problems with this type of refrigerator and you've had it for several years like this one is from 2014. This that's hidden behind your panel probably is more to more centered and you probably will it'll take a lot longer before you have this issue right here uh, so those of you that have had this issue in the past or will have it uh, this is something to look out for right here well, anyway I am going to reverse engineer putting all of this back together again and then we'll do a functional check to make sure that the fan is blowing properly without any noise Now, as you can see, everything is put back together. We are back to the way we started without that annoying noise fan. Uh, so everything is good back. Let me give you a word of caution. When you are removing any of the ice on the coil or behind that cooling plate back there, avoid using any type of sharp objects. I know it will be tempting to try to expedite breaking up some of the ice, but don't do it because you can damage uh, some of the copper pipes or some of the components back there. So uh, take your time when doing this. So everything is working good. The only thing I hear is the compressor and the compressor is working overtime because this has been off for about 45 minutes. Also, something to be aware of, when you come back and you see the temperatures are not like the temperatures were when you first started, the refrigerator and the freezer are going back into uh, cooling and it will take a little while to get the temperatures back up there, but rest assured it will get back again. And yes, fix the refrigerator. Oh, good job, babes. <laughs> I don't even know if she knows that I was working on the refrigerator today. Now I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I hope you feel it gave you the confidence to go out on your own and take care of some problems around the house like the problem we had today with the Samsung French door refrigerator getting rid of that 
testy noise uh, in the background. And I, I would have been so upset if I were listening to that uh, this weekend uh, because this is the last episode of Game of Thrones and I, I don't want to miss that with a bunch of noise. Well, anyway, if you are new to the channel and you have not subscribed, uh, oh, you might God. find... Uh, you are so lonely here. Oh. Let me join you. <laughs> <laughs> and again, if you are new to the channel and you are not familiar with, with what we do on this channel, we teach a bunch of people how to do things uh, from retiring in the Philippines all the way to doing self-help projects like you've seen right here. Uh, thank you for joining me. I was lonely here, but I have, I have thousands of people here with us too. So, uh, <laughs> You're so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, and if you have not seen some of the other DIY projects, you can check them out on this video. Things such as the Mitsubishi split unit, how to do maintenance on, or something as simple as cooking Korean spicy beef soup. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Ness more. and I working inside the kitchen, and we have many of those uh, available. So if you enjoyed <laughs> today's video, please give us a thumbs up. Please share. And if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You'll be subscribed and you'll be notified the next time we upload a new video. So until such time, you have a wonderful and blessed day.